Roman Jezebel and Jewish Ahab's future plans. This will be the first part of a very detailed study. We're going to start out in the book of First Kings in the Old Testament. I'm going to show you some really interesting things, how they tie in together um, in, to future events. You see, one of the greatest proofs of this book being God's word is it has to be able to prophesy the future. Anybody can write a holy book, but the only way that you can prove that it's of supernatural origin is if it accurately predicts the future. You can discredit things that happened in the past and this proof there, well, the Bible says that it, well, this land was called such and such, and it's not called that anymore. Or the Bible says that there's so many horsemen, or this event happened, and you can say we found sources that say it didn't. All that stuff's irrelevant if this book can prophesy future events. And the interesting thing is, when you actually study the Bible in depth, and you are saved, and the Holy Spirit reveals truth to you, you will see that these things were oftentimes revealed back in the Old Testament. So... It's not just that, oh, well, the Lord gave full revelation in the New Testament and none in the Old Testament. No, there is also these prophecies are there in the Old Testament, but they're very much veiled. But it's a very interesting study that we're going to be doing here to show you future prophecies. 1 Kings chapter 16, we'll begin in verse 29 and read to verse 33. The Bible says here, And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa king of Judah began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel and Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as, it, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel the daughter of Eth Baal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Um, notice it's not just some kind of a thing of, well, you know, in this case it was wrong, but other times it was okay. It's con clearly condemning the thing of interracial marriage, and the Zidonians were not Jews, by the way. We make that point very clear. <clears throat> Verse 32, And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Um, Modern-day Israel represents is represented best by Ahab. They've departed from the Lord, and they've gone after strange, a strange wife, say it that way, that's non-Jewish. And that's the Roman Catholic Church. <clears throat> and I will prove it in this study. 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to read the whole chapter here because there's a whole lot that ties in here. You need to understand the story of Ahab and Jezebel and Elijah. Hmm. Elijah that shows up as one of the two witnesses in the end times. Huh. To judge Ahab, Israel, and uh, Jezebel, the Roman Catholic Church. 1 <clears throat> Kings chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Jesus said that there would be famines in the end times. Hmm. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks, peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou my Lord? Art thou that, my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned, that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not there, 
he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I am thy servant, fear the Lord from my but I thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that they, Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? <laughs> huh, interesting, because you'd have the uh, Jews doing that today to people like me. Oh, you're troubling Israel. Oh, you're some kind of anti-Semite because you say things against Israel. Hmm, very interesting. And by the way, the uh, <clears throat> Moses and Elijah, when they come in the future... In the book of Revelation, they're prophesying and doing things in Israel. And the people hate them. Ahab hated Elijah. Ahab is a type of Israel in the future. <clears throat> Verse 18, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel. I am not troubling the Jewish people that are watching this video. I'm not your problem. I actually care about you. It's your wicked Jewish rabbis that are leading you astray. <clears throat> I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. Um, there's a lot of uh, priests and prophets and things that eat at Jezebel's table. Roman Catholic priests. Bishops, archbishops, cardinals. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They don't know the scriptures, just like modern day Jews in Israel. And the ones here in America too. Don't want to leave those out. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. That's the right way to do things. But notice, by the way, the little uh, thing with pagan deities. There are gods. He says, call ye on the name of your gods, plural, and it's lowercase. But then he goes on to say, and the God, capital G, that answereth by fire, let him be God. See, there are no gods in Bible-believing Christianity. And even, you know, the Jews, the Jewish, you know, faith in the Old Testament, or the Jewish system in the Old Testament. There are no gods. It's one God. There's only one God. You don't have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's not there. Um, so if you're a Jew, don't look at me and think, oh, he's a weird Trinitarian or something. No, I'm not. I believe in the Godhead. All right, Jesus Christ is God. He's the physical manifestation of God. The Father, God the Father is the soul, and God the Holy Spirit is the spirit. It's that simple. But when you uh, have a system where you can say multiple God names, gods, plural, and yet there's just one God, then you're dealing with a pagan deity. Had to throw that in there. Verse 25, <clears throat> And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods. <laughs> Love that. The name of your gods, plural. That's what the Trinitarians are. You know, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Persons is, is plural. 
Blessed Trinity, singular. It's a pagan system. It's a pagan deity. No basis in scripture for that. Unless you're looking for the pagan basis, right there it is. And in many other places. <clears throat> Verse 26. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Yes, it's okay to mock false religions. And said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth, and must be awaked. And they cried aloud, and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out upon them. Very, uh, that's a practice that the priests of Baal will do. Um, they call it self-flagellation today in Roman Catholicism. Putting down the flesh, a hair shirt, a nail belt, uh, flagellating yourself, hitting yourself. You can look and see the videos online of the Catholic processions. I think it's in the Philippines. And these guys walk along with, with whips and little chains and things, little sharp things, and whipping themselves in the back until the blood gushes out of their back and it's running down their back of their pants. It's on YouTube. Look it up. Look it up. It's the same group. The ancient uh, Baal system. You know, Canna Baal, the Feast of Baal. Cannibal. Here, we've hunt, consecrated the host. Eat the flesh. Here is the wine. Drink the blood. It's Christ's body and fle or his flesh and his blood. Cannibal. Cannibal. You see how it all works out? The priests of Baal. Jezebel. A Gentile harlot that has lots of priests. And they eat at her table. Hmm. Messing up the Jews. Verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Had some dippy integrationist at one time, and he said, he said, you say that there's twelve natural boundaries according to the number of the children of Israel, you know. The, but there were more than that, you know, the children of Israel. So, you, you know, you're ridiculous. There's, there must be more than 12 boundaries. Well, actually, that makes your problem worse if you're trying to teach integration because that would mean that there's hundreds more or maybe millions more boundaries. So people aren't supposed to marry within a lot more boundaries now. Rather stupid. But right there, it's saying, Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Right there it is. It's 12. 12 boundaries that God set up, Deuteronomy chapter 32. But, you know, when you're a pervert, you have to prove whatever you, you know, you want to prove something, that's what you have to do. You just have to twist the scriptures unto your own destruction. Verse 32. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels, barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran uh, around round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. Interesting, he does it three times. There's a system of numbers all throughout the Bible. Verse 36, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. The stones. It burned up the stones. Have you ever seen that? I never have. And how about burning up all the wet wood and all of the, uh, what, the water and everything? Wow. Hmm. Elijah calling down fire from heaven. The two witnesses. Fire. 
in the future. Fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours people and things. Interesting. The book of Revelation. Verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. Love that too. He doesn't, they don't say, He is our God or He is a God or something. He is the God. Singular. Definitive article. The before a singular word. God. The God. Not God in three persons. No, no. The God. If you're worshiping God in three persons, three persons, you're worshiping a false God, a false pagan deity. You better repent of that. Verse 40, And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up, now look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. <laughs> Amazing. Seven times. Seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. Seven there's seven spirits of God before the throne. Seven, seven, seven. Hmm. Verse 44. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. I wonder whose hand that was. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Pretty amazing. Okay, now let's continue on chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, she believes in God in three persons, do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. I'm going to kill you. Jezebel has a thing for killing God's servants. Huh. Oh, but that's all just fake. The Roman Catholic Church never put any Catholics to death, or any Christians to death, excuse me. They put their own Catholics to death, too, so that was actually true. The Catholic Church, they never put Christians to death. That's all just Protestant propaganda. Uh, I don't think so. And I've talked to Catholics face to face. You push them hard enough, they'll they'll get to the point where they want to kill you. They're very violent people, extremely violent people, like their mother Jezebel. Verse three. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He got scared. Uh, there's that city over there, Vatican City, Jezebel. Um, and she can put fear into the hearts of God's servants. She has for a long time. Hmm. Let's jump down to verse 9 of the same chapter. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, behold the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the, earth, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Hmm. Notice four things here. All right. And we're not going to go here for sake of time, but you can write these down. Um, 
I have it listed right here in my notes. Number one, there's a strong wind. Revelation chapter 6, verse 13 says that there's a mighty wind in that time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Earthquake is the second one. There was an earthquake. God was not in the earthquake. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, there's a great earthquake. Huh. There's a fire also that Elijah sees. Revelation 17, verse 16, it says that they hate the whore and they burn her with fire. Hmm. So you have wind, earthquake, and fire are all elements that God shows to Elijah. But God's not in any of those. But they're going to be in the future. Those things are signs of judgment on Jezebel. <clears throat> and number four, there's a still small voice. Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 through 5 is talking about the whore being judged. And verse 5 says, quote, And a voice came out of the throne. Huh. So there's a voice there. And it's interesting because, like I said earlier, Elijah is one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, that brings judgment on the Jewish Catholic alliance. Hmm. Now, see, here's the interesting thing about the Bible, like I said in the previous study. The Bible gives judgment. And a lot of that judgment, when the people hear it right then, like Daniel, he heard this thing of the judgment, he saw the thing of the future, and he's saying, I don't understand. He's sick for several days. He's sad, astonished. I can't speak. And he, he doesn't understand. And the Lord says, seal it up. It'll be for the end times. See, when it was going on, they didn't understand what it meant. If you would have said to Elijah, hey, you're going to be coming back to the nation of Israel, you know, in, in the year 20, whatever. And um, it's really going to be something then. He would have said, what? Huh? See, when it's happening, you don't understand it but they understand it later on. See, we now look back at hindsight and we can say, so we see things in the Old Testament that were pre-types of Jesus dying on the cross. A lamb is killed and his blood is shed and they you know, are given his, the skin of the lamb, Adam and Eve, when they come out of the garden. So what's a type of Jesus Christ dying on the cross? Yeah, we know that now because we can look back with hindsight. They didn't know that. And this famous Baptist teaching, they were saved by looking forward to the cross. <laughs> Nonsense. Jesus' own disciples were arguing with him about when Jesus was saying, I'm going to die on the cross. I have to die. They were saying, be it far from thee, Lord. No, it's not going to happen. See, we look back now and we can see those types. We look back now and we can see what Elijah was going through and how it relates to Ahab being Israel and Jezebel being the Roman Catholic system. But he wouldn't have understood that back then. It's an amazing thing. And again, what is that proving? It proves that there is a spirit within the pages of this book. And it's not, this is not a man-made book. Nobody can write this kind of a book over the course of thousands of years and get these things to all tie together. Not happening. Friend, if you're sitting there holding a King James Bible in your hands, you're holding a supernatural book. But you see, you say, well, I'm an atheist and I like to watch your videos for comedy. And I don't see it as a supernatural book because you don't have the other part of the um, necessary thing here. You're not saved. You're not born again. So the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. You just look at me as a fool. That's why you're here, you know, laughing at me and whatever else. You don't understand the spiritual things. You have to be saved to get that. Let's go to Revelation chapter 11 and verse 13. Revelation 11 and verse 13. I'll show you an interesting thing here. Revelation 11 verse 13 says, And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Okay. We see four things again. Four things in 1 Kings 9, 19, 9 through 12. Now we see four things again. Number one, we see a great earthquake. Then we see the tenth part of the city fell. Number three, we see in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. 
Important to remember that. And number four, the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Okay, now let's look at each of those four points in detail. Number one, we have a great earthquake. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18 through 19. Let's look, go down a few verses. The Bible says, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hail. Hmm. So there's you have the earthquake mentioned, and the book of Revelation will oftentimes retell the same event over and over again. It is the book of Revelation is not chronological. Anybody that teaches that it's chronological, Revelation 1 to chapter 22, and it's all just all timed out, uh, they will mess it up badly. You'll see things retold and told over and over again. Uh, watch out for any false preacher that uh, comes out and tries to say it's chronological. Uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 17 through 21. Let's read that. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. You know, it's interesting. I just want to say this. I actually heard a geologist being interviewed the one time, and he said that <clears throat> studying geology and particularly the thing of earthquakes and uh, plate tectonics and shifting and all the other stuff, and he said that the, all the earthquakes that we've had over the years, that's leading to someday there will be a great earthquake that there's going to be some huge earthquake that's just off of any kind of scale that we can even imagine. And he said, this is coming in the future. He wasn't even a Christian. And he could see that there was going to be a great earthquake someday and that that would completely change life on earth. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> verse 19, And the great city was divided into three parts. There's the number three again. And the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Hmm, a great earthquake. And God remembers a city that's called a her like into a female. Holy Mother Church, perhaps. Uh, number two, we had the tenth part of the city that fell there in Revelation 11, verse 13. Again, you know, 13 there, 11, 13. Nothing to it, I'm sure. Leviticus chapter 23. Go back to the book of Leviticus, back into the Old Testament. We'll see about this thing of the tenth part of the city that fell. lot of interesting things in this study. Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus 23 verse 23 through 30. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, seven again, <laughs> In the first day of the month shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Moses being the other of the two witnesses, by the way, Moses and Elijah there. Also very interesting. Verse 27, also on the tenth day of this seventh month, tenth part of the city fell in the seven-year time of Jacob's trouble. There shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Huh. Their souls will be afflicted? The time of Jacob's trouble? And there will be an offering of fire made unto the Lord? A city that's filled with priests of Baal? 
Huh, and fire comes down from God? Interesting. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. The Lord's going to burn up uh, Ahab's wife. That horrible, wicked uh, relationship that he has as an atonement. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Um, there's so many scripture tie-ins here. <laughs> uh, you know, come out from among, from among her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins or her plagues, the Bible talks about. Are you going to do any work in that time as a Jewish merchant? Hmm. You're going to have to uh, stop your work. Cut your losses. The stock market crash coming for those Jews? Uh-huh. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. And, oh, oh, my gold, my silver, my stocks, my bonds, my... Uh. It's a day of atonement. The time of Jacob's trouble. How in the world could you think the church is going to be there for that? Why? What would be the point? <laughs> oh, people. It's not that hard. It really isn't. I can get into all this real detailed, you know, heavy doctrine stuff, but you just understand there's no point in the church going through the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> You'd be destroyed in a, in a debate. I get this thing all the time, you know. You need to debate professor so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, doctor so-and-so. He'd bury you, Denlinger. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 24. You're scared of debate. Actually, you're right. I'm actually petrified of debate, just to put that out there. <clears throat> it's called uh, wasting my time. I'm afraid of wasting my time. I put out what the Bible teaches. You can agree to disagree, disagree, whatever you feel like doing. Go make all the videos you want to, to about me and your channel or whatever else and come out and show how dumb I am and okay, whatever. I've got work to do. I've got other things to do. Waste my time, go some debate some guy that's not even saved. How does that work? But here it gets really interesting about the tenth thing. Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 1. Let's start there. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, tenth part of the city fell, remember? The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even of this same day, the king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. Huh, the kings there with mystery Babylon. And utter a parable unto the rebellious house, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Set on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it. Gather the pieces thereof into it, even every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder, fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock, and burn also the bones under it, and make it boil well, and let them see the bones of it therein. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! The woman is a city? She's drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus? Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is therein. She's got a cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. She's scum. <laughs> hmm. And whose scum is not gone out of it. Bring it out piece by piece, let no lot fall upon it. For her blood is in the midst of her. She set it upon the top of a rock. She poured it not upon the ground, to cover it with dust, that it might cause fury to come up to take vengeance. I have set her blood upon the top of a rock, that it shall not be covered. Huh, there's a great earthquake, and great Babylon comes in remembrance to God to give unto the, her the wine of the, the fierceness of his wrath. A bloody city, like unto a female, that God's wrath is coming upon. Hmm. Verse 9. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I will even make the pile for fire great. Heap on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh, and spice it well, let the bones be burned. 
What did Elijah do with the altar back there? That's right, rocks, wood, cover it with water. The city that the woman sits on, that she sits on many waters. The waters are people all over the altar that this bloody city controls. Oh, there's no tie-ins at all here. He said, well, it's just a book. It was just written by men. And, you know, sinful men wrote this book. Um, these books are written hundreds of years, thousands of years by different authors. And it all ties in like this. You couldn't write a book like that if you wanted to. This is God's book. But I wonder what the original Hebrew says. I don't care what the original Hebrew says. I have the original English. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see where am I reading to here? Verse 14, I'll read to that. Verse 11, Then set it empty upon the coals thereof, that the brass of it may be hot, and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. I love how the Lord calls it scum. <laughs> she hath wearied herself with lies. The Vatican, hello. And her great scum went not forth out of her, her scum shall be in the fire. <laughs> All these pervert priests and everything, molesting little children, what a bunch of scum. The Lord says, yeah, I, I agree. I'm going to burn that scum in the fire. In thy filthiness is lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou wast not purged. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness any more, till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it, it shall come to pass, maybe. Uh, no, it says it shall come to pass. And I will do it. I will not go back, neither will I spare, neither will I repent. According to thy ways and according to thy doings shall they judge thee, saith the Lord God, the seal of Almighty God. It's never going to happen that God's going to say, oh wait, you know, I, I made a decision, I... I'm just going to forgive everything that the Roman Catholic Church ever did. No. I did a sermon a number, what, however long ago, months, years, whatever it was, and I said the one system, the one group of people, the one church, so to speak, that God never forgives. God's always willing to love. God's always willing to forgive. That's a lie. Your little skinny jeans wearing past your little hireling in his 501c3 IRS run church, and he's up there saying, God loves you. God's love is unconditional, friend. Your best life now. You know, um, no, he's a deceiver. He's a liar. There's a church out there. He wrote about it back in the book of Ezekiel. A city, a bloody city, and they're scum. And God says, I'm going to burn them. And I already showed you how I did it back with Ezekiel. Israel's watching including King Ahab. And who wasn't there? Jezebel. Huh. But her priests were there. And there's the altar of the Lord. That's a rock there. Hmm. Yeah. A little bit of time there. Water, flesh, and the fire of God comes down and consumes it. Very interesting. Now let's go on to point number three. The 7,000 men are slain. 1 Kings chapter 19. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. Your sermons are too long. I can't endure an hour long sermon. I just can't. This isn't for those people. This is meat. This takes a little bit longer to chew up, you know. But it's a lot better for your health. A lot more encouraging. Give you better strength. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Do you ever see the Catholics that go to these... Uh, Statues of St. Peter there. Uh, it's 
not Peter, because Peter was never in Rome. <laughs> Nowhere in Scripture do you see Peter going to Rome. A little detail there. And, uh, but you look at the, the feet of Peter. They're smooth with the kisses, the kisses of those scum. Baal-worshipping scum. Oh, St. Peter. Oh, let me cross myself with an upside-down cross. Let me kiss your toes, Peter. Oh, Pope, could you please kiss my baby? Well, if you want your baby damned to hell for all of eternity, and yeah, that's a good idea. They like to kiss. Kiss and tell. But you see the 7,000 there. Romans chapter 11. Go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Hmm. You say, well, but wait a second, Brian. Okay, you're losing me here. Because Revelation 11, 13 talks about um, that there were 7,000 that were killed in the earthquake. But you said 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, Romans chapter 11, verse 4, and it both says that God's reserved 7,000 men. There's no killing of those 7,000 men here. I knew you were going to say that. Job chapter 1. Go back to Job chapter 1. You're right. They are reserved. But you see, we're talking about the event in the past that happened there when Elijah was on the earth the first time. We're not talking about in the time of Jacob's trouble. Something different happens then. Job chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. There's that pesky number system again. Seven and three. Huh. Job is a type of a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble, by the way. We'll see that. Verse three. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. Huh and 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east, kings of the east in the future. Can't miss. Jump down to verse 16 of the same chapter, Job chapter 1, verse 16. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God... Remember the city that's burned with fire? The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Huh. So there's 7,000 sheep that are consumed by God. And in the great earthquake, there were 7,000 men slain in the great city. Hmm. A little tie in there. Finally, we have the number four, the remnant were affrighted and glorified God. Go to Romans chapter 11. <clears throat> Romans chapter 11 and verse 5. Even so, then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. The remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God. Hmm. There's a remnant. And I get this thing. You actually believe that there's any Jews today that, have not, that are not interracially mingled or whatever else? Yes, I do. You know why? Because the Bible said that there would be a remnant. A remnant of the Holy Seed. And that's why I believe it. I'm not going to go over to Israel and try to check in everybody's genealogy and whatever else and things. A lot of them are, are mingled. Absolutely. But I believe that there's a holy seed that's there because the Bible said so. 
And until you can show me proof that you've talked to every single Jew, Jew out there, done DNA tests on all of them and whatever else, you would have to prove that every Jew on this earth is mingled. And if you would prove it, then you just, you're proving the Bible to be false. So why would you do that if, if you claim to be saved? Um, but until you can do that, I'm not going to be convinced otherwise. I believe what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. The Bible says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There in the end times, the remnant of her seed. That means that there's a remnant there. The remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 27 through 29. <clears throat> Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been like unto Gomorrah. <laughs> oh boy. This book, by the way, if you don't know, is actually, eternity is contained within the pages of this book. So how so? Because of the scripture references. It's eternally over to here. Well, that refers over to this, and this refers over to that, and whatever else. It's amazing to me. The scripture tie-ins here. I mean, we're going to see about this. <laughs> All right. Uh, notice two things. Number one, he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And uh, verse 21 and 22. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. He will cut it short in righteousness. Hmm. And number two, the thing of... Uh, there in Romans chapter 9, verse 27 through 29, it says about we should have been like unto Sodom. What about that? Revelation 11, verse 8. Revelation 11, verse 8. The Bible says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Ha! Huh. Jerusalem, which is in Israel. Hmm. Jude chapter 1. Go to the book of Jude. Right before the book of Revelation. Jude chapter 1. There's only one chapter, I realize, but we'll just say chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. I will therefore put you in remembrance that ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Hmm. Luke 17. Luke 
chapter 17, verse 28, down to the end. Okay, we read here. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire, <laughs> there we go again, and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, and the other left. And it means at a mill, by the way, too. You get modern perverts trying to make it into some kind of sodomy. Poor countries, men sleep. Two adult men would sleep in the same bed. Women grinding at the mill together. Don't want your modern, corrupted mind make it into some kind of perverted thing or listen to people that say it's perverted. Um, verse 36, Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Talking about Revelation 19. Now next we're going to turn to the back cover of your Bible, right there, and we're going to close it. Because that's it for this study. Uh, part two is coming up next of this thing of Ahab and Jezebel. A lot more interesting scriptures to go through. And you know what? Just to show you how infallible and brilliant I am. I just preached this whole study without plugging in my microphone. <laughs> Thankfully, it re does still record. It just doesn't do the lavalier mic right here. So... Uh, yeah, it's a deep study. Standing here, you know, with it hanging around my neck this way. If you saw me here just a few minutes ago, I went like this and took it off. and uh, I can't believe it. <laughs> so, oh well. I, I keep trying to make, you know, my, myself perfect and infallible. You know, and speak ex cathedra and everything that the magical Catholics can do. But it just never seems to work for me. So, sorry. Sorry, you know, I realize I should have flashing lights right now and angelic music oh, singing and, you know, things like that, animation and all that. But, you know, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, uh, I know that this has been a blessing to you because it's been a blessing to me to see how many things tie in with the Scriptures. Brethren, this isn't just a book. No way. It's God's book. You can't get that from the Greek and the Hebrew. I mean, maybe you could if you studied it long enough, wasted all your life, you know, trying to study those languages. But even if I could, I'd still have to translate it in English for you. What would be the point? God already gave it to us right here. You study it. You believe it. You put this book, the King James Bible, put this book to the test and see how God shows you all these times, how everything works together. His plan is there. And he's not going to repent of it. It's not all of a sudden a, oh, well, you know, God's up in heaven and he just kind of says, oh, I guess I don't want to do this stuff after all. I changed my mind. Well, whatever. You know, that's not our God. He's got it all worked out, including your part and my part. So that's going to be it for this one. And we'll see in part two of the Ahab being Israel and Jezebel being Roman Catholicism and their future plans. Then we're going to get into even more hardcore stuff. See you then.